You see a land that is rich in its heritage, the heritage of a people who treasure the land and all that it offers. This is the land of the Pima and the Maricopa, two Indian tribes who joined together and settled here more than a hundred years ago. A people today who have a vision, a vision for the future. The Pima and the Maricopa are a people who are looking to the future, the future of their community and the future of their children. They're building and maintaining a lifestyle according to their cultural beliefs, yet adapting those beliefs to the world which surrounds them. Today, the community is operating a state-of-the-art 200-acre solid waste landfill and materials recovery facility. This facility reflects the vision of the community, a vision that is looking to the future, the future of the community and the future of the children. This vision has the community leading the way in providing a solution to the area's solid waste problem. The community's lifestyle is part of the vision statement. The vision preserves the quiet, rural community where the land is important. The community provides its members with needed services such as health care, education, and other social services. The land provides for the families of the community. Large pieces of land close to population centers where it's economically feasible to transport waste are scarce. It's necessary to use every acre as wisely as possible. The story of the many innovative earth-friendly services at the Salt River Landfill begins with refuse collection in Scottsdale, Mesa, and the town of Gilbert. Scottsdale residents are provided two distinct services. Solid waste collection, like trash and garbage, and curbside collection of recyclable materials. Since many Scottsdale locations are quite distant from the landfill, city trucks take their loads to an intermediate facility called a transfer station. At the transfer station, all material is dumped on the floor and then pushed through an opening into a large transfer truck parked beneath the floor. These transfer trucks can carry three times the amount of material to the landfill as the trucks used for collection. In Mesa, there are three collection services, solid waste, recyclables, and green waste. Green waste is organic material from yards and lawns, like grass clippings and branches. Even untreated lumber scraps can be placed in the green waste barrel. Recyclables and green waste are picked up separately on the same day. Solid waste is picked up on a different day. Since Mesa is relatively close to the landfill, its trucks go there directly rather than to a transfer station. Trucks from Gilbert transport their loads directly to the landfill as well. In addition to solid waste, recyclables, and green waste, cities and private parties bring a considerable amount of white goods to the landfill. White goods are major appliances, like water heaters, refrigerators, stoves, and air conditioners. On average, the landfill accepts about 2,000 tons of waste each day, for disposal, recycling, or composting. When your trash goes to the landfill, it's processed in different ways depending on what it is. Solid waste, green waste, recycled materials, or white goods. The goal of the landfill is to recycle as much material as possible and significantly reduce the volume of the rest. Each type of material is handled in a way which assures that the land is kept environmentally sound and used as efficiently as it can be. Solid waste, including garbage, is simply buried, but much has to be done to bury it safely. The first step is to excavate an area 100 feet deep called 
a cell. Then, a geocomposite liner system is installed to isolate the contents of the landfill from the surrounding earth and groundwater. The liner system is actually two layers of material. If the inner layer is breached, the outer layer absorbs the escaping moisture and expands to seal the opening. Perforated pipes are laid on top of the liner about 200 feet apart. Next, a drainage layer of gravel is installed. Then, a two-foot protective layer of soil is spread on top of the drainage layer. The perforated pipes are used to pump out rainwater or moisture in the refuse. This liquid, called leachate, is pumped from the base of the landfill to either of two places, a lined leachate evaporation pond or back into the landfill. When recirculated into the landfill, the moisture assists in the decomposition and compaction of the refuse. This means that more refuse can be placed in the same space so that the landfill can operate for more years. The landfill is filled up 10 feet at a time. Each 10-foot layer is called a lift. Refuse in each lift is dumped from incoming trucks and then pushed into place by a bulldozer. A large knobby wheeled vehicle called a compactor is used to compress the trash in order to save space. When the lift reaches a depth of 10 feet, it's covered with a minimum of six inches of soil. The part of the lift where refuse is being added is covered with a canvas at the end of each workday. The soil layer and canvas help contain the refuse, keep birds and insects away, and minimize odor. During the process of filling the landfill, and for years thereafter, two things are carefully monitored, groundwater and methane gas. The landfill has four wells to sample and detect any changes in groundwater. Monitoring methane is a little more complex. As the contents of the landfill decompose, a very large amount of methane gas is produced. Methane is highly flammable and, at certain concentrations, may be explosive. It can kill the root structure of plants and crops, and it's a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases have been implicated in the increase of the Earth's temperatures. Therefore, it's imperative to keep methane from getting outside of the area where the refuse is contained. The landfill is surrounded by 14 gas probes, which signal any gas migration. In addition, a system to collect gas is built into the landfill as refuse is added. After every four lifts, or 40 feet of refuse, are deposited in the landfill, perforated pipes spaced 200 feet apart are installed in a small bed of gravel at the top of the refuse layer. At the next higher 40-foot level, the pipes are offset 100 feet from the ones below. All perforated pipes are connected to a larger header pipe at the top of the excavation. Then, a vacuum is applied to the piping system. As methane gas is produced in the refuse, it is literally sucked out of the landfill into the pipes and sent to locations where it can be burned off or used for fuel. Not far from the flare where gas is burned off is the green waste processing area. Green waste is brought to the landfill by cities or private parties. First, anything that doesn't belong with green waste is removed. After that, it's allowed to dry out. Then it's chipped or ground into very small pieces. Once ground, the material is moved into piles for composting. Compost is decayed organic matter which is used to condition soil. Water is added to the compost piles which are moved or turned occasionally to aid in decomposition. After about a month of this, the compost is fed onto a vibrating screen where it's separated by size. 
Then the material is loaded up and trucked to a bagging facility. At this facility, the compost may be mixed with manure or other nutrients and then bagged. These bags are transported to home and garden stores where they're sold to gardeners and landscapers. Compost is used around the home and garden to fertilize lawns, plants, and trees, which, in a perfect circle, from earth to earth, produces more green waste. So, green waste isn't buried in the landfill, which saves valuable space. The Salt River landfill handles about 50,000 tons of green waste per year, which represents about 8% of the landfill's annual volume. This means that over a 10-year period, not burying green waste adds about a year to the life of the landfill. Near the green waste area is a space where white goods are processed. Discarded appliances like water heaters, refrigerators, stoves, and air conditioners are brought here. Freon is removed from any appliance with a refrigeration system. This is done to prevent the Freon from escaping during the recycling process and damaging the ozone layer of the Earth's atmosphere. The appliances are then dismantled and motors and compressors are removed. The sorted metal parts are hauled away to be re-smelted. The landfill handles about a thousand tons of metal per year. Once again, space in the landfill is saved by not burying the metal. But by far, the largest volume of landfill space is saved by recycling materials like paper, plastic, and glass. This is done in the Materials Recovery Facility. Trucks dump recyclable materials on the floor of the facility. A front-end loader moves the materials onto a conveyor system. The conveyor system carries the materials into the processing area. First, non-recyclable materials and cardboard are removed. The rest of the material is sent through a number of mechanized sorters, which use gravity and friction to separate most of the recyclables. Things which cannot be handled by the sorters are separated by hand. Material which cannot be recycled, called residual material, is put into large containers, returned to the landfill, and buried. The sorted materials are baled or put into containers and shipped to market. The materials recovery facility provides a valuable source of reusable materials, which are already partially processed. Creating products from partially processed materials requires much less energy and produces less potentially harmful emissions than creating products from raw components. The focus on reuse of resources extends to a number of unique landfill projects. The landfill reuses everything, starting with millions of tons of sand and gravel, which is removed to make excavations for solid waste. A great deal of the excavated material is crushed and used to make concrete. Millions of tons of crushed material were used in the roadbeds of highways 101, 202, and 87. It's also used in the two-foot protective layer at the bottom of the landfill. Uncrushed material is used for covering the waste at the end of each day and will be used for the final cover of the landfill upon closure. Another landfill project involves renewable energy. The Alternative Energy Research Park is an area where renewable energy technology is demonstrated and tested. Just down the road is a closed landfill also owned by the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community. Here SRP, the Salt River Project, has built an innovative electric generating plant. Instead of conventional fuel, the plant uses landfill gas, methane, generated by the decomposition of 12 million tons of garbage. Under this earthen cap, there's enough landfill gas to produce four megawatts of electricity for 10 to 20 years. That's enough to light 3,000 homes. Since this landfill is old 
and no gas collection system was installed as it was filled up with waste, 110 vertical wells had to be drilled on the 217-acre site. Perforated pipes were installed vertically in the holes to extract the gas. The perforated vertical pipes were connected to horizontal headers buried below the surface of the cap. Large blowers create a vacuum in the piping system, which sucks the gas out of the refuse pile and moves it through a filtering system to five Caterpillar engines. These are big internal combustion engines similar to automobile motors. Pollutants in the exhaust from the Caterpillar engines are superheated and destroyed before the exhaust is released into the atmosphere. Each of the five engines drives an electric generator to produce electricity. All of this valuable energy is coming from a landfill that's closed and capped with no visible indication that the land has ever been used at all. After landfills are closed and capped, they can be converted to other uses, even while the gas in them is still being extracted. Popular uses for closed landfills are parks and golf courses, but they're suitable for just about any activity which requires large, attractive, peaceful, open areas. And this brings us back to the land. The land which has been cared for while being used for the benefit of the people. People caring for the land, and the land, in turn, caring for the people, is part of the natural balance in the Pima Maricopa tribal region. The Man in the Maze, one of the legends, illustrates the choices each person has in determining the paths leading to individual dreams, goals, and ultimate destination. Goals that are in balance and harmony with the community and society. Goals that are a reflection of a vision. 